And a very good evening. Hello, Maddie. Hello, Tom. How are you? I'm all right, thank you. We've had some lambs born today. <laughs> oh, wonderful. <laughs> How are you? <coughs> Top form. Thank you very much indeed. We Excellent. have got a very exciting evening, I think. Do you want to tell us a little bit about what we've got to look forward to? Well, we've got some very contrasting acts. Um, first, we're going to be introduced to artwork who blend, I think it's psychedelic Celtic folk fusion music. So it's all sorts of stuff that you're not, you don't usually hear out and about. And then we're going to be introduced to Bob and Brenda Hale, who are Suffolk based newlyweds and who've not really had any musical training, but have learned how to play the auto harp as well as other instruments. Wonderful. Shall we get straight on then with artwork? Yes. Here they be. And uh, very bravely, we've got Phoebe, who didn't know she was on until about five minutes ago. <laughs> <laughs> My bad. It's nice to be here. It's lovely to have you. Very nice to see you. <clears throat> I think it probably is just worth warning people that this is all a bit different, this one, isn't it? There's, we've got a completely different venue, and we're going to hear a lot about marie so why don't we just start off shall we with one of their songs and then we can get into well songs and tunes i should actually say and then we can get into a conversation about uh, quite who and what artwork fascinatingly do Thank you. 
Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I absolutely love it. Oh, don't forget, by the way, folks, that there's a comments box uh, that you can fill in as we go along, and that would be lovely. And we can ask questions on your behalf or make comments or whatever. Maddie, over to you. I was just thinking that how, how do you get the effects like the technology? Um, just effects pedals, echo, flanger, um, just what. I've seen I've seen violinists playing um, with effects before, but they tend to have the same effect on all the way through. Um, and I just thought when we were playing as a duo and we needed to sort of pick it out and get a bit of a variety into it, um, it playing with effects is like having an instrumental break. And so I worked with different effects and found different techniques of playing to make the effect work better. Because I was thinking, sorry, sorry. <laughs> it's just it's what's going to happen when we're on online. <laughs> um, I was just thinking that it's kind of traditional, isn't it? But you've just completely sort of arranged it so that it's got something different about it, something new. Yes, because we keep the format around, because we're basically a Kaylee band, so we keep the format around the, the dance format of, you know, sort of 32 bars. Um, but yeah, so then the effects come in as like a 32 bar um, section, which is just like an instrumental break, really. And Claire also does the same with her singing and effects on the singing. So that would be 32 bar, you know, just so it's all in the Kaylee format, the, you know, dance format. What we haven't done, of course, is to introduce these lovely people properly. So <laughs> we've got Art Butler. Um, and Hello. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> well, I kind of assuming people might know, but no, you're dead right. <laughs> <laughs> it's just because it's a mirror image, it's sort of hard to know where to put your hand. Well, I was going to say on the right, and I'm thinking to myself, is that my right there? Right, whose right is that? Never mind. <laughs> uh, and Claire Cordeaux is sitting next to Art. Hi, Claire. Hi. And, uh, and then Phoebe. That's uh, <clears throat> that's uh, Phoebe Butler too. So. Where I get very excited about all of this is what to me is a fascinating innovation, and that's the stage that they use. Mm -hmm. um, I wonder if the best way to do this is to go straight into a little bit of video, and then people will have an idea of what we're talking about, and then we can get uh, <coughs> Art and Claire and Phoebe to tell us about it. Let's do that. Okay. There's a boat down in the harbour on oh, Marie, sweet Marie. Sail from Woodbridge up to Scarborough, on away now, sweet, sweet Marie. She sails with stormy weather, on oh, Marie, sweet Marie. Rode the waves like a seagull's feather, on away now, sweet Marie. So scrub her up, sluice her down, set the stage, sing to the whole town.
Now, if you didn't get it, and I'm sure you did, the stage is a boat, <coughs> and where you saw them going was to various maritime festivals here and there. And for those of you really sharp-eyed, there was Claudia, of course. Yes. Yeah. was all about it. made the connection in the first place. Okay, so I'm going to leave the difficult heavy lifting to you, Maddie. You can ask the questions. <laughs> um, I was going to ask, where did you get Marie from? What was she originally? She's a um, an ex herring ring netter. Um, she used to work in a pair of fishing boats, so they they towed um, a net behind them to catch herring. So she's a herring boat, and I bought her from a fish company in True, in southwest Scotland, um, and she'd retired from fishing. Well, they were selling her, they couldn't, she wasn't earning her keep, and so I bought her from the fish company and um, sailed around the coast and up to Woodbridge in Suffolk, and um, that's, that's where she's based. And what inspired you to turn her into a stage? Because I'm not sure many boat owners think, I'm gonna turn this one into a stage. <laughs> <laughs> Why not, they should. <laughs> they'd, be worried about, they'd be worried about disappearing as the tide went out. Is that a very crass question? <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> we, we obviously spend a lot of time um, playing music, and also she's a wooden boat, and she takes a lot of time herself to to look after. And and um, we were thinking, how could we pull both these things, which take lots of time and which we love doing, together? so that they're all sort of heading in the, in the same direction. So <clears throat> we thought, well, hey, wouldn't it be fantastic to do music on a, on a boat? Um, and we pitched it to Ipswich Maritime Festival and they said yes. And <laughs> so we thought, oh, right, okay, we're gonna have to do it now. Um, so we did and we, um, the first year we hired scaffolding um, and scaffolders built the stage for us. And then after that, we thought, how hard can it be? Um, we'll We'll get our own scaffolding and <laughs> build our own stage. And um, it turned out to take about 16 hours, but we've learned how to do it. And we've done it, you know, we've got all the, what's it called, statement of method or whatever, you yeah. know, to help the safety and all the rest of it. And we've, yeah, and that's that's how it started really. And then, then we went to lots of other festivals. Um, yeah. Whereabouts are the festivals that you go to? We've done Hull. Maritime and Folk Festival a couple of times, Scarborough, Ipswich a few times. Um, there's, a, there's a great little festival in Woodbridge, which we've done a few times. Um, and then we've been to Pampol in Brittany and Brest, but we did build a stage there. We just performed as musicians. And do you, do you take your musicians with you? Yes, yes. We, we, what, we aimed, what we aim to do is to, um, it, is to c connect with, other musicians in that coastal place. So we'll take some musicians with us and then we'll liaise with the port um, to see what the local community is like and um, put local musicians on as well. And so the whole aim is to try and connect coastal communities and uh, musicians in that, those areas. And in fact, the song that you heard at the beginning um, of the video was by Bridget Cousins, who's a musician in Scarborough. And um, that year we ran workshops on the boats. We had the drone of Marie's engine, which you can hear in that track, um, and some pictures of, of Marie, and that was the sort of inspiration. And then people would write songs about it, and we got to know each other, and um, she wrote that beautiful song. I think when we were talking before, you told me that the engine is in the key of E. <laughs> e flat. It's in E flat. Transpose <laughs> it. It's like, it's like the brass section, isn't it? No one wants to write in E flat. <laughs> Phoebe, what do you think about all of this? Do you get seasick? Um, I don't get seasick. No, I'm I'm one of the only ones who doesn't because um, <laughs> well, obviously art's my dad, and so I've grown up around boats, and um, and I, I guess I'm one of the musicians, and I'm also taken along as crew a lot of the time. So I do long shifts at the wheel, and um, yeah, help out really. And do all the, all the musicians know they're going to be crew? before they get on board. No, it's a surprise. No, they do. <laughs> <laughs> they soon learn. It has been a bit shocking for some. Uh, we'll have a few comments in a little while. Um, keep sending them in, they're great. Um, so all I can say is I'm hugely impressed. I think it's just a wonderful 
reflection isn't it on folk people and isn't it all about connecting and traveling and making friends and sharing music and wow what a better way to do it than that and the thing is you turn up with your own stage and you they've got to get a gig so the <laughs> yes. to get a gig <laughs> <laughs> it's nobody's going to turn you down are they <laughs> exactly <laughs> let's have another song another tune or maybe a song, I'm not sure, I can't remember. <laughs> Well done, well done. Um, lovely use of the delay. And <laughs> yeah, lots of delay. Is that a light show or have I had too much wine already? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Well, we we videoed it and the in a in a like a room in a house looked awful. So we went round the house looking for drapes and things and converted the living room into a little festival stage. Um, I- out all the lights and got out all the lights. <laughs> I think it's it great. great. Yeah. <laughs> what we've learned from doing this stage, one of the things we've learned on the boat stage is that um, I never normally put the lights on during the day because it's because it, it's light out. But when you photograph, um, all the faces are dark, so um, so you have to put the lights on even in the daytime to um, you know to light people up properly. So that's what we did in the house. We put we, we got out all the stage lights and put them on as well. No, it looks brilliant. Yeah. Well, that's great. Well, we've got Ellie Tree. Hi, Ellie. Uh, hi, she says. Oh, hi, it's lovely to be able to hear you and see you. And <laughs> so nice to hear artwork playing live, Kevin Abbott. And we've got uh, really ingenious. Uh, love the idea, says Kevin. Love the idea of floating stage. Uh, oh dear, oh dear. Barry says, which key 
are you playing? Oh. Oh. Uh, uh. <laughs> well, somebody had to do it. We got it out of the way. <laughs> Probably <laughs> E minor. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I'm hugging all the conversation, <laughs> Maddie. Um, I was just going to ask your your music. Is it a, 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 oh, sorry? <laughs> is it arrangements or originals? They're originals, yeah. And so, who does the writing usually? Is it a sort of a team effort? It's a team effort. Um, I tend to write the melodies, the the tunes, and Claire writes the songs. Wow, <laughs> I'm honestly I'm in awe. I don't know how you get sort of so many different melodies <laughs> to get it working. If I try and write a melody, it's always the sort of same thing. And I'm like, hang on, I recognize this from somewhere. And it's like, oh, yes. my own song. <laughs> yeah, I have done that where you write something, you think, hey, great, this is, and then you go, oh, it's, it's <laughs> that tune, and, you know, but um, I don't you sort of get inspiration from play. I don't know. I mean, a jig and a reel isn't that difficult to write because you've got a, You've, you've got a format that it's got to be in. So you've only got to actually write eight bars and then you've got to repeat it anyway. And it's an A minor, it goes A minor and G major. So so you've got you've got constraints. You, you, there's like a format that you have to stick to. So um, yeah, they just sort of come out really. And that sort of leads me to the, my next question. Obviously, when we had our conversation, um, you mentioned how you've sort of dabbled in sort of other bands and different genres. What's made you go down the Celtic folk fusion psychedelic genre? Good question. <laughs> <laughs> Not sure if I've got an answer. Is it is it a kind of a natural progression over the years of experience of different bands, and this is where you've ended up? Yeah, you also, you say that you're pro progressive folk as well, don't you? That's part of the kind of title. Yes. Well, we used to play in a Cayley band that played traditional tunes, but with with reggae and world music backing. You know, drum, drums and, and bass. So, and that was cool because you're playing a Cayley, and um, you can you can see like the bar staff and the people who haven't actually gone to the Cayley, they're all sort of going, hey, this is great, and sort of dancing and, and things. So so we, it's, and the kids, the kids love it. So we just thought this is really inclusive, um, playing folk music, but with with a more sort of contemporary um, backing. Um, and so when we were in that band and we were doing traditional numbers, we started writing more and more of our own tunes and and that band was sort of um it was coming to a natural end anyway and so we just started artwork out of it and just started playing our own tunes and concentration on those really so it's like yeah, a prog yeah. progression really and we 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 all like um a variety of of different different type of music um i mean i was a bass player before um, a guitarist and played in indie bands. Um, BB, say say a bit about what you do. Yeah, I, I studied um, like early music at music college for six years, so I'm classic classically trained. And then I play bass guitar in another band as well. <laughs> so, wow. so you've got a huge, broad range of genres and instruments and things. You can sort of tell with your with the way that you've blended everything together. You've got all these different things and put it into just this amazing, unique genre. It's a really lovely, exciting sound. Isn't it? Yeah, oh, thank you. And that, the whole thing, what a super family, what super kind of introduction. <laughs> a, a wonderful lifestyle, doing great, entertaining stuff, and lovely people. I mean, how much better does it get than that? <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> You're too nice. But, <laughs> Phoebe, we're going to see you playing something that doesn't look like a recorder to me in a minute. Um, it, like it a is a recorder. <laughs> oh, it's a recorder. What sort of recorder yeah. is it? It's a bass recorder. Um, so it it's is just, a bass it's recorder. Well, I got it's that. a bass recorder, yeah, it's just a bit bigger. And um, the small ones, the desk can't. Sometimes I play the alto. Yeah, it's about three foot tall. <laughs> you, you can get them um, about seven foot tall. 
how do you play it? <laughs> I had to play one in an exam and I got dizzy in the exam. It, it has a tube coming down and it has its own stand and my fingers can fit in the holes. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Just want to say here, Claudia Meyer has sent a, a comment in saying, "Any key, as long as it's C." Oh, yes. Yes. Warwick's so going to run a bath, jump in with his guitar, and see what happens. <laughs> <laughs> Don't plug in. <laughs> Steve says he thought Claudia was the only floating musician in Woodbridge, but now he knows he's wrong. So, no, and so. our, our boats are more next to each other as well. Okay. Right. That's That leads to very interesting thoughts, doesn't it, of com competing practices and confused neighbours. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So... Um, Gig wise, you've been very thin on the ground, no doubt, all through COVID. But are you sort of ramping up to get some more? Uh, <laughs> yeah, you yeah, we, uh, you we've had forty or fifty gigs a year. Yeah, we do. We, uh, in fact, we've got two more today, so we've now got ten <laughs> this year. Yes. All, the, all the same weekend. Yeah, same weekend. Wow. Your uh, website's out there for anybody that's interested. That's the commercial bit, artwork, and uh, it's a very interesting website, actually. Uh, so we got... Notes and my stuff data. <laughs> it's been a delight to meet the three of you. It's, it's, it's lovely meeting you, yeah, you guys. Thank you. Thanks for having us. Yeah, thank Throw you. this at you last minute, Phoebe, but uh, <laughs> it, we couldn't not have you. Um, <laughs> well, thank you for having me. I was, um, I was distracted watching Dizzy Rascal on the Bake Off. <laughs> <In my detriment. laughs> Quite right. Uh, and we give a lot of people um, uh, a lot of get up and have a go themselves, I'm sure. So uh, well done. And we've got one last piece of music from you. Let's have a listen to that.
And what about that? Brilliant. Wasn't that? Mm -hmm. So, would you like to introduce Brenda and Bob? Yep. So now we've got a couple, Brenda and Bob, who are from Suffolk. And they so both had... actually they're just over the border in Norfolk. Oh. Yeah. You have to <laughs> live in Norfolk to know that. <laughs> Sorry. Um, they've um, had very different sort of introductions to music. Uh, Brenda's been playing all her life, whereas Bob has only just started playing in the last 17 months. And we're going to sort of see how they've come together as a duo over the next half hour. In the blush of a new romance. Yes. <laughs> Here they are, the newlyweds. Congratulations. <laughs> ah, somebody's okay. muted. Oh, you're not now. Yes, you are. <laughs> uh, Paul, can we unmute them? There we go. There, there we are. Oh, we're away. Right. I've, known, I've known Brenda's father and mother. And brother for lots of years, almost 50 years. Probably. I pulled a house down what they lived in once. I've done <laughs> all sorts of jobs I do. So you knew him well then, Brenda? No, no, no she was the odd one out. I didn't know at all, really. No, I've heard of her, but I hadn't seen her. I, I was living in, in Scotland for many years. I was up there for about mm. uh, Glasgow for about 36 years. But obviously used to come back to Suffolk, where I was born and raised, to see my my mum and dad. And uh, I knew, obviously, about Bob and my brother's uh, friendship. And Bob always went around with their group, the Silver Ace. You know, so well, we didn't know each other that well until until I, I retired and, and moved back to Suffolk. And um, as I say, we... Uh, we realise how much we've got in common and, uh, as I say, married for just about two and a half years now. Congratulations. Let's see what you have got in common in music then. Let's have a look at the first of the pieces that we've got from you tonight. Uh -huh. From a Clinch Mountain home down at Macy's on the trail of the old lonesome pine Angels camp down to Nashville Your world was a far cry from mine In England on the radio airways Twice weekly at a regular hour took my sweet inspiration from the first time I heard Wildwood fly. Yes, it was my privilege to know you. Your music my honor to play. And I want you to know that I'm grateful the music of my practice today. I came to love and admire you. Your friendship for me I could tell. I'll never forget that warm evening when I played my harp for me. It was my privilege to know you, your music my honour to play, and I want you to know that I'm grateful for the music I practice today. You influenced music for many, an honour no less than deserved with auto hop guitar and voices and a body of folk song preserved yes 
it was my privilege to know you. Your music my honor to play. And I want you to know that I'm grateful for the music I practice today. To that beautiful home way up yonder. That wonderful peace you have gone, but we won't forget what you gave us. The music will always live on. Yes, it was my privilege to know you. Your music, my honor to play. I want you to know that I'm grateful for the music I practice today. Can I just quite quickly tell you that that song? Um, was written by a, a wonderful auto heart um, player called Mike Clayton, and it's, it's obviously called My Privilege, and it's because he felt it was a privilege when he uh, met Neil Carter in the Carter Camp, and uh, he wrote that song in, 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 in the middle. Can you hear us all right? Yes, yes. We can't hear what we can't afford, probably the group. Yeah, there's a bit of feedback. Yeah. For me. Mm. No, you can across fine. Yeah. Much better. So, I wanted to ask, why did you choose to play the auto harp? Who, me or Bob? Both. Well, we well, guessed Bob because you told him to, but why did you start? <laughs> <laughs> well, um, I've only been playing the auto harp for about four years now, and I, I went to a, a music event with my fiddle. Um, I played fiddle, and I went to a, uh, uh, to learn a sort of bluegrass type fiddle. And I didn't really get on with it very well. It really wasn't for me. And at this event, there were several auto harpers there. And I was in their company, and I just, I, I just loved the instrument, and and the people I was introduced to, and it wasn't long after that I, I got my own auto harp, and from what, having one auto harp, um, between us we've now got five. <laughs> They've been breathing. You yes. Say yeah. <laughs> what do they call it? Um, AA syndrome. Auto harp acquisition syndrome. <laughs> we've got. Uh, uh, the reason we've got so many is because uh, they're in different keys as well. Um, we've got a couple of chromatic auto harps uh, which can play in um, C, D, E, F, and G. Asking me. <laughs> but the other ones uh, play in either D or G or, or C and F. So it's a it's um, a complicated instrument, sure. but it's not that complicated really to play. And Bob only started, as you said, Maddie, um, about seventeen months ago. And I think we can um, blame Claudia Myatt, um, uh, who was mentioned earlier by the previous people. She's watching in, I think. <laughs> yeah. She's Do coming you... in for a lot of criticism tonight. <laughs> Uh, Do you want to quickly say how you got hooked on the auto harp? Well, we we went to Woodbridge to uh, this thing. Mike Fenton was there, and that's about. I had the little dog, you know, I was a dog sitter, and um, that was. I was so wrapped up. Everybody seemed to happy. There was about perhaps thirty of them all sitting around, and and Mike was teaching them what to do, and. And I thought, I've been watching music for ever since I was born and never, ever thought I could play anything because my family are very good players 
and I didn't get a chance, and they didn't want to teach me nothing. I picked my father's piano cording up once upside down, and they laughed at me. I said, I never play it like that. I said, what's the matter with you then? He said, you got it upside down, you silly sod. So that sort of the end of that. But I am awkward. I'm still left-handed, but I play this thing right-handed. But, but they were all there. Everybody was happy, and and they're singing away, and they they weren't marvellous players, but they was enjoying it to one another. And I thought I could be there doing that with them. Mm. And yeah, they're right, yeah, and and that isn't we call this so uh, deceived that did you know being there. This is uh, play every Tuesday. day half past five before that some mornings. I've been yeah. outside quarter to eight this morning. Lugging great big lumps of wood. Look what I do with my hands. Oh. <laughs> we call this folks. We call this Tuesday folk people, and this is the reason we do that because they're really great people. <laughs> we, we, better have, we better have another song. We'll come back to you in a second because we won't get through it all otherwise. Okay. <laughs> The instrument belonged to a famous fella. You probably don't know him, but a lot of people will know him. Pete Sayers owned that instrument. And I had the man 
from Long Sutton, Alec, and I altered all the chord bars so I could play it because I'd been playing a different button, to, you know, so that he altered it so I could play his one. And that was a, a year ago, mm. um, almost a year ago. That was he, um, you cut some of the bit off of which I, I thought was funny on that film. <laughs> I said to Boris, if we get this wrong, Boris, if you're listening, give us another six months lockdown and I might get it right. If anybody go on the YouTube and see that, they'll see the, the bit what I didn't cut off. <laughs> <laughs> Here's some encouragement for you then. So Warwick says, I'm left-handed, Bob, but I've been playing right-handed guitar since I was 11. Keep ah, going. There you go. Uh, Warwick. Peter says, lovely sentiment. Uh, Steve brings Claudia into it again. <laughs> She's the link tonight. Uh, all those 5.30 starts are paying off, Bob. Uh, yeah. And you have a loving teacher. What about that? Oh, yes. yeah. <laughs> I think this might be your brother. You've got a brother, Dave? Yeah, David. David yeah. Yes, still guitar David player. Partly, yeah. Best player voted the best player in Europe a year or two ago. He's on a load of records. Yeah. Pedal steel well. guitar. Brilliant. So look him up, David Hartley. My drinking partner, he is. <laughs> My best man at the wedding as well. Uh, Jeff says, "Lovely song and beautifully sung." I'm a Carter family man. Thank you. Um, time is whizzing oh, along when we've, we've still got things to do, haven't we? Mm. So we've got a little surprise for you. Yeah. Um, so let's just have a look, a look at that. Free beer. Hi, Brenda, and uh, nice to meet you, Bob. Uh, I love uh, the fact that you're uh, sharing your musical journey on home stage. Of course, <clears throat> uh, not just a, a musical journey, but one that took you from Suffolk uh, to Glasgow and all these years in Scotland and now in, in Norfolk. Um, I think we probably first met at the Glasgow Fiddle Workshop uh, in, the, in the very early days when actually we were meeting in my house uh, just outside Glasgow. And I think it probably was pretty obvious from then just how determined and focused you were not only uh, to build that organisation, uh, which you did you, your amazing ability to find funding got us out of my house and into a bigger building and and more classes but also your love uh, for the music and uh, taking on uh, the fiddle as well as your uh, busy day job as well as uh, the funding um, made you a very busy person and I suspect that you're still busy um, I <coughs> In some ways, it's probably, looking back on it now, obvious that uh, you would make that move. Of course, um, taking on the Kilburnie Records uh, challenge and developing that as well um, uh, moved you more into the musical world, I suppose, in, in terms of like your day job and then Green Tracks and then the violin shop and um, that training that uh, allowed you to restore uh, and rehear bows uh, it was all part of that, I suppose, transitioning into a much more kind of uh, music-based uh, way of, of living. But all the way through that has been this love for traditional music and uh, your fiddle playing, of course, uh, has carried through along with, I think, uh, dulcimer and probably a few other instruments uh, these days. Anyway, I, it would be lovely to catch up uh, in person and maybe... Uh, post lockdown and COVID, uh, we can uh, actually get together and play music without having to go through Zoom or uh, Microsoft Teams. It would be lovely to uh, be part of this and uh, uh, see you soon. Wow. <laughs> so, hello. 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 Ian Fraser. Oh, <laughs> yeah. for so many years, and it was wonderful working for him for him and uh, he was one of the best tutors at the Glasgow Fiddle Workshop in those early days. You know, the 90s, 
I, I was in Glasgow for about 36 years and the 90s, there was a decade of rapid development in the in the arts in Scotland. Um, and also at the, during that time, it was um, Glasgow became European uh, city of culture. And there was the Celtic Connections Festival, which was founded as well. But, oh, how lovely to hear Ian. And yes, Ian, mm -hmm. I do so hope we can get together once all this madness is over and play music again. Lovely, thank you so much. Well, and just to save your embarrassment, I'm quickly going to tell people that all of that was about your career in the record business. It was about becoming a self-taught violin repairer. It was about becoming a partner in the only Scottish West Coast violin shop in Glasgow. And it was about setting up um, the Glasgow Fiddle Workshop charity and raising money for that. So you did amazing work up there. And yeah. many congratulations you. to you. And Ian was very keen that we got that over just oh. how how hard you worked and what a great partner you were to him. Let's have another song.
<laughs> Brenda, you mentioned in our little conversation before that Joan Baez is quite a big inspiration for you. And I have to say that when you sing, it really does remind me of Joan Baez. <laughs> she was my heroine. Uh, I, when I, since I was about um, 17 or 18, I got all of her albums and uh, sang all of her songs. I played guitar in all the days as well, so I was a guitar and voice. And uh, yes, uh, that song you played um, at the beginning. Uh, Whistle down, whistle down, whistle down the wind. And I heard her singing that on her new album, and I thought, I'm going to try that. And, and I do like that song. Yes. Mm -hmm. There's a few last comments here. Um, I don't suppose this is the Carter family, but anyway, a Carter family, maybe it is. Uh, says, uh, great energy evening. Thanks to everybody. So that's nice. Um, well sung, unique sound, and uh, a super couple. So isn't that nice? And We've had quite a few on Facebook as well. Things like very enjoyable, nice song, very nice, lovely, and lots of clapping. <laughs> oh, lovely. Yeah. Thank you. But it's, you know, I come back to this business about it's all about the people, uh, which it is. I mean, you're having so much fun, and that gives us so much fun. So... Yeah. We couldn't be more grateful for having you on. Well, it's um, it's since meeting you, Tom, and the folk to people and the home stage people, it's really encouraged us to to keep motivated to keep going, and um, and you know it's, it's lovely to be part of this. But one day we'll be able to get together as musicians and singers and mm. audience, and just enjoy oh. that. It'd be a lovely place outside here we call it our pick and porch and we got it all lovely for this year you know and no one has and last year rather and uh, we haven't had a soul around here yet no. well there'll be a queue well, in, in the right middle now. of the year <laughs> I've, got, I've got a little message here i've got to pass on brenda and joan Baez separated at birth <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much, the two of you. I've got so much to try and I haven't said anything. Oh, no, there's so many stories. I could talk for two days. I was going to tell you about this. Can we go another minute or two? Go on, what's that? Well, this bit in the middle here, I used to go to Beckrow Junior School. 69 years ago, I worked it out. My first day there was about 69 years ago. The headmaster had a lovely gold watch and chain. And, and this thing here, can you see that? No, you no. can't. We're, we're, <laughs> there, there. <laughs> that is green and that one is red. Which you can't see it very well. But when he was in a bad mood, that used to be on red. And we said, look, we'll see what mood he was in, you know, that would be on green, he was good. <laughs> he was a lovely old boy. I can tell you a lot of stories about him. Have you got a few minutes more? <laughs> we, we shall look forward to another day. Okay. <laughs> Thank you very, very much for coming. Thank I'm you. Very very happy happy to see you. Thank you. Very we'll much. have a last song from you, which is so much fun. It's so cheerful. I love this. <laughs> Draws an up the boat just right, draw the dancers near. Music sweet into the night, the first day of the year. Bring a banjo, make it sound, let your heart out cheer. Take the tune and pass it through, the first day of the year. January through December, twelve months make a year. Joy and sorrow to remember as we travel here. Put the black eye, peaceful luck, make enough to share. 
bring a beer in a pickup truck the first day of the year. Celebrate with rum and gin, brandy is too dear. What a fine way to begin the first day of the year. January through December, 12 months make a year. Join Charo to remember as we travel. That was brilliant. Thank you very much indeed. Thanks <laughs> all of you for your messages and thanks for being here. We'd all be wasting our time if you weren't. Uh, Maddie, last word to you. I just want to say that it's been a really, really great evening. I've loved how it's been inspiring for people who maybe want to start an instrument but aren't sure if they should and maybe someone who wants to try a different genre and blend things up or even get a boat and start a stage <laughs> it's just been inspiring and i've loved it hasn't it just yeah isn't our job just great yeah <laughs> <laughs> brilliant good night everybody hope to see you in a couple of weeks time good night